Uh, hello and welcome to my demonstration for running WHD Load and other hard drive games on EUAE on the PS3. I'm going to show you how to go about setting this up um, in the way that is used on my other videos. Basically I'm going to demonstrate how, it, how it's set up using OS X and EUAE there. You can of course use Windows and win UAE um, whatever suits you basically we've got a fairly standard configuration set up here so I'm going to start with the Amiga side of things I have a base workbench set up um, that I pretty much use for everything which is pretty similar to my actual uh, A1200 setup and if we go through here to the hard drives see that's there is my standard workbench disk and I've mounted as DH1 um, a drive which is actually on a micro SD card that I'm accessing and you can see here that it just goes to a little folder called boot HD now this is going to be our standard boot disk for everything. So if we uh, run the system here, bear with us, I'll just get that into position for you, and we'll have to ignore that for now. And we see here, what we have is the untitled Workbench disk, or boot disk, sorry. There's workbench, this is the other disk. You don't actually need to do this from within um, UAE if you've already got a setup uh, ready. You can literally drop the files into the folder. That's all you really need. And what we have here is just a few basic commands in C. Um, not everything, just a few to sort of get you going to act as debugging tools etc. Most importantly WHD load itself. You notice I have a few older versions for the sake of compatibility. Um, in the devs directory you will probably require to have to the uh, a few kickstart files correctly labeled. Information on what to do there can be found on various Amiga forums or on whdload.de itself also included uh, a few basic libraries, nothing special um, mostly not required and in S a few key files uh, including my registered WHD load key um, from here the only thing we really need to alter here is the startup sequence and what we got here is a very very basic script um, I'm going to be looking to be improving this over time Maybe add a few other options of things that it could boot, but all it says is it is it looks onto DH1 and looks for a file called script. If that file exists, it runs it. Execute DH1 script. Um, that's to allow you to have a customized boot script for each game. After that, if it hasn't actually done anything, um, we jump to the second drive, DH1. And we tell WHD load to run game.slave and to preload all the files it's to keep the in game loading as quick as possible. And that really is it, that's the entire startup sequence right there. Nothing too complex. Um, I do also have some WHD load prefs that are set up, including no write cache. Now this I find is quite important for this kind of setup, you do want this enabled because what this does is that when you're saving your game in WH, uh, that's booted through WHD load it will therefore save instantaneously to the hard drive that you are accessing. Now normally what WHD load will do by default is to save it into a RAM cache and it won't actually write the files to the disk until you've quit the game. Now because we are likely to be quitting the game uh, and quitting the entire emulator all in one go 
there's a possibility that you could be playing through your game, get bored, but you might have achieved a high score or something, and you quit the emulator, and it hasn't saved your files to the disk. All it's done is save it into the RAM cache, and you've lost that forever. So that's why you want to switch on no write cache. Also, quit key is set to 5A, which is the star or asterisk key on the numeric keypad. Uh, other than that, what I've also done is reduce the splash delay to zero. This is the little screen that comes up saying you're loading, well, WHD load is loading, and the name of the game tells you the name of the author. No offense to the authors, but we want this to be nice and quick. So splash delay is set to zero. And that's all I've set in the WHD load box, which goes in the S folder. So that's it. That's our entire boot disk. I haven't even bothered to name uh, the drive on this setup. It's not really necessary. So what we'll now do, so I'll close that EUAE. And we will go back and we'll remove our drive that we did have. We will re-label re this one DH0. And we will also add a second directory in gaming. Amiga. HD. And basically you have lots, as well as having boot HD that we've just been looking, you just create a folder for every game that you want. So, for example, Alien Breed. Here we go, we have the Alien Breed folder. And if we just bring that up in the browser, or finder, sorry, what we can see is that the Alien Breed folder is literally the unpacked files from www.whdownload.com uh, from the packs compiled by Killer Gorilla and all I've done is rename the slave game.slave and that's what WHD load is looking for our script is specifically looking for game.slave you'll find that in the packs they're named alienbreed.slave or alienbreedaga.slave or pinball fantasies.slave or whatever game it is all you've got to do is rename that and make sure you've got the data for the game which in this case is two disk images and in fact the rest of the stuff could all be deleted um, I haven't deleted it but that's laziness on my part and you'll see that all these games work in very much the same way so game.slave and disk um, and occasionally we have ones that are data based so we've got game.slave we've also got CF data there for cannon fodder so just as a little test to show you if you mount DHO as boot HD we mount DH1 as alien breed and we run that and we let it do its booting bits and pieces and we'll see that it jumps straight into alien breed okay so that's it demonstrated working on EOE on the Mac.